All right, folks, now we're going to talk about how to write media queries, what media queries are going to look like. Okay, so first I'm just going to show you what you're going to see. And then we're going to dig a little deeper. Okay, so here on my site, I have one div, which contains one H1, one paragraph, and one button. And I've given them a bit of styling. Okay, so you can see everything here is what we're looking at. As I change the size of my page, nothing happens. So if we get really wide, looks a little weird. If we get really narrow, looks a little weird. Less weird, but still a little weird. So if you were designing a site using media queries, what you'd really want to do is, as with any other project, you'd want to paper prototype it. And with media queries, you would want a paper prototype at every major breakpoint. So you would want to paper prototype what your site is going to look like on a laptop. You'd want to paper prototype what your site is going to look like on a mobile device. And you'd want to paper prototype what your site is going to look like when it's enormous. You might also want to do a tablet mode in there. That's up to you with how in-depth you want to get with your media queries. Okay, but you always want to plan. You want to plan ahead. You want to know what your site is going to look like at the three or four major screen sizes. Major screen sizes. Okay? In this case, we're kind of going in blind. So this is not how you should conduct yourself when planning out a site that is going to be responsive. But let's go ahead and try and code in some media queries to make this site look a little bit more appropriate. Okay, so at media, let's start with a min width media query and let's figure out a nice pixel size for when our site starts to get really big. Notice that when I open my inspector and I change the size of my window, see in the top right, right here, it shows me the exact pixel dimensions of my page. So let's say here is about 1,008 pixels. So let's say at a min width, at a minimum width of 1,000 pixels wide, I want this particular CSS to take effect. And what do I want to start happening? Well, let me select my div, and I want to push the text a little bit more inward so it stops feeling quite so lonely there on the side. So I'm going to change the div's padding left to, let's try 250 pixels. Okay, and this, the text jumps inward a little bit. It's a little bit more appropriate. Feels a little better. Let's also make the div a little taller. And let's do that with padding. So I'm going to do padding. The top and bottom will do 125 pixels. Uh, and let's just leave it at that. We'll do padding. This will apply 125 pixels of padding all around the div and then this will override the padding left and change it to 250 pixels. Okay, so laptop size, desktop size. Okay, now, now it's, that's, not, that's not too bad, but now I think our font size could be bigger for basically all of these. So let's go ahead and select my H1 font size, let's try 3 REM, let's try 3.5, okay, and then paragraph, font size 1.75 REM, and the button's okay, the button can stay the same. Okay, so we jump from here to here. A little more appropriate for a much bigger screen size, right? And we, of course, we could fiddle with these more, but we're getting there. So, what is this media query doing? 
this media query written with at media in our CSS says that when our window reaches a minimum width of 1000 pixels, the following CSS is going to kick on. So before we hit 1000 pixels of width, it's like this CSS doesn't exist. But as soon as we do hit and surpass 1000 pixels, a minimum width of 1000 pixels, this CSS kicks on. And what does it do? It overrides any pre existing CSS. Okay, so what does that tell you about where we should write our media queries? We always write our media queries inside our main.css style sheet. We don't create a new style sheet for them or anything like that. But we always want to write them at the bottom of our CSS. The reason why we want to do that is because we want to be sure that the code inside media queries, when it gets turned on, can effectively override pre-existing code. And remember, CSS stands for cascading style sheet. The further down in a style sheet your code occurs, the more power it has, the more precedence it has. Okay, So that's part one. Write your media queries in your main.css file at the bottom of your style sheet. And once again, the way we write them is with at, the at sign, media, followed by parentheses. And inside those parentheses is either min or max width and some kind of dimension. Then curly braces and regular old CSS inside those curly braces. Once more, a min width media query like this tells our browser that when our screen hits a minimum width of 1000 pixels, turn on this code and we can write as much CSS in here as we'd like. Now let's work on the other direction. So we handled, we used a min width media query to improve the layout of our site at a much larger screen. What about at our, at a smaller screen? Let's say, let me open my inspector. Let's say at a width of 550 pixels. Okay, it still looks okay, but let's start changing it here at a width of about 550 pixels. Well, should I use another min width media query? Should I use another min width media query? Do I want whatever code I write in here to override my existing code when my screen is at a minimum width? Of 550 pixels or do I want the new code in here to only work when I'm at or below 550 pixels I would say at or below so we're going to want to use a max width media query in this in this case okay so as you code for screen sizes which are smaller than the format in which you're currently working you want to use max width when you move towards larger screen sizes, you want to use min width. So, okay, so at media max width 550 pixels. What do we want to have happen? First thing I'd like to see is I want to see all the content in, in my div center. In general, things are often a lot more centered on smaller screens. Okay, that works. That looks good. I like it. What else can we do? Mm. I don't think the div needs to be taller or smaller, but maybe the font size of the H1 needs to be a little smaller so it doesn't break, it doesn't have that line break quite so, so soon. So let's try a font size of 1.75 REM on that H1. It's still having that break. Well, the reason it's having that break is because the div has a huge amount of padding. See all that padding around it? So maybe what I should do is get rid of the padding to the left and right on my div. 
I'm going to do padding left, 0, and padding right, 0. And that gives my text more room to spread out to the left and right. So that works. That's nice. Does it break again? Yes. Well, eventually it does. So let's still go a little bit smaller. Let's try 1.5 REM. There we go. And now the text is never going to break. It's as small as it goes. I like it. Um, but let's push it down a little bit more. So let's make give this div a padding top of 150 pixels. Maybe too much. All right, something like that. I like it. And I think we're pretty good. I think we can stop there. We have mobile layout, tablet layout, laptop, big old desktop. Three different formats for the code on my site. And we have achieved this using two media queries affecting four elements a div, an h1, a button, and a paragraph. And we never actually did anything to the button. So we have a min width media query that affects our site at a minimum width of 1,000 pixels. So from 1,000 pixels all the way up to however big you can imagine. And a max width media query, which affects our site from a width of 550 pixels down to zero, or as small as it can go. Okay. Now this is pretty common, pretty common shifting of layout here. Pretty straightforward, nothing crazy. Something that you should note about media queries is you will rarely see both min width and max width used at the same time. You will normally see one or the other. So if you see a bunch of min width media queries on a site, that usually implies that somebody started development on it like this. They started from the smallest screen size and gradually worked their way up. On the other hand, if you see only max width media queries, that implies that someone started developing from a, a large screen size and then gradually worked their way down. So what that means is Max width media queries are uh, usually indicate a site that has been developed desktop first. Desktop first. Whereas min width media queries usually indicate a site that has been developed mobile first. Okay? So go ahead and go ahead and copy this layout. It's nothing but a div with an H1, a P, and a button. And practice using these two exact media queries if you'd like. Use these two media queries and experiment with how you can affect the different styles of your page under these different conditions. You can change colors, you can change font style, uh, font family, you can change all kinds of effects at different sizes. There is no limit to what a media query cannot do, or there's no limit to what a media query can do. Go ahead and take some time and experiment with that. If you'd like, change the pixel dimensions of these media queries as well, or add new media queries and see how that affects your code. In the next video, we'll practice a little bit more and then move on.